Hey Mustangs, I'm gonna cover low fire glazing here with you. Um, you would already have a bisque piece. Sorry, I'm gonna have a shaky camera here for a minute. He's doing this kind of odd. Um, so I have my bisque fired piece. He's got a little color on him already, but yours won't. You need some brushes, depending on um, how big your piece is, how much glaze you wanna cover. You need your small sponge and uh, you need a plan. Super important, so drawing of your piece with some color on it, and then you take that drawing and you cross the room over here. We're gonna go across to where our low fire glazes are, up here on the wall. Okay, let's see if I can set this down and you still see, whoop, a little bit. Sorry, bumpy camera. So we have a whole variety of low fire glaze colors that are up on this wall. They are in kind of order you are invited to take the tile off of the wall and make some choices with actually holding them next to each other instead of just trying to see what this might look like next to that. That's why they're on these little tiles and on the nails so you can pick them up and compare the colors. Once you choose colors that you're happy with, then you can turn them over and you will see they have numbers on them. Sorry for our camera, they're backwards but you then write those numbers down on your plan. So I've got mine mapped out and I've written orange. I know the other one is a yellow. I've got some red, some teal, green, different things going on. So I've written a basic name of the color and then the number with it. And then I head back over across the room to our glaze cabinet. So back down here. And here you have a cabinet that is labeled Low Fire Kono 6. Again, sorry, it's backwards on our camera here. But this is the cabinet that you're going to open up. And you will see all these bottles of glaze. We have tons of glaze. And I know everybody complains if they don't have just the color that they're looking for, but this is a lot to choose from. So you're gonna come over here with your list and look for the number on the blue tape. Don't worry about the bottles yet, but just find the number on the blue tape. They start with the smallest number up on the top left-hand side, and they go all the way down all these shelves till we have one bottle at the bottom that is 1,781. So find your color, find you the number of the glaze that you want to use. And then once you find it on the tape, make sure that it is also on the bottle if it hasn't been washed away and on the lid. You want to make sure that you have that color consistently because the person before you might have gotten confused. And then a really important thing when you're using our cabinets is to pick the bottle up by the bottle itself. Do not pick up bottles by lids. We have found out this hard way over and over again that a lot of people have a hard time screwing lids on properly. So if I pick up this bottle by the lid and it isn't screwed on, even though it looks like it's on, it's gonna hit the floor and splatter everywhere. And low fire glazes, like most glazes, are rather expensive. They're getting more and more expensive. So one, we don't wanna lose the material, but two, I also don't want you to ruin your clothes or your shoes and have clay splatter everywhere. So you pick it up by the bottle. Let me look over on my list and I'm looking for number 1053. This guy is what I want, whoops, down here. So I'm gonna grab him and then I'm gonna come back over to my workstation. Again, sorry, shaky camera syndrome and get you all set up right here, okay? So, I've got my piece and my drawing. So the rules about glaze in our particular classroom is you can have up to two bottles with you at your workstation at a time. If you wanna put 10 different colors on your piece, then you would take this bottle. First thing you do is unscrew the lid and screw it back on all the way to make sure it's actually on. Then you're gonna turn the bottle upside down and you're gonna shake it how you hear that liquid shaking around inside. 
Okay, after you've heard it and you can feel it moving back and forth in the jar, you can open that guy up. Oops, this guy's got a little paper part that's worn out, so I'm gonna throw that away. There we go. And then I'm gonna pour a little glaze into my little palette here. Now, if you are only gonna use one glaze color at a time, you can work from the bottle, but I wanna show you how you can do it if you wanna have multiple colors, okay? So again, I could work right from the bottle if this is the only color I'm using, but if I wanna do lots of colors and I kinda of wanna get all set up from the start, then I'm gonna to go to my yellow one. Again, unscrew the lid, make sure it's attached, turn it over, shake, shake, shake. And then pour a little into another dimple in that palette. I know I'm gonna be using quite a bit of this glaze, so I'm filling these dimples. If I was, say, only glazing his little eyes and that's it, I wouldn't need nearly that much material. Now, I've made a mess on this lid just because I got a little glaze on my hand. So make sure that you clean the threads of the bottle. Threads are the part that the, the cap screws into. Make sure you clean that. If the lid's really messy, you can get in there and clean that out a little bit too, and then screw that on. That way you aren't making it so the next person can't get the lid off, because if you get glaze stuck in there, it makes it really hard to open these caps, and then we have the problem of things getting stuck. So then I'm gonna return these two bottles, and I'm gonna look for my next color that I want. There we go. And my next color is 1015. So I'm looking for this one. And you could continue to do that until maybe you want eight different colors, you can fill your tray. So again, I'm gonna unscrew. You could see this is a mess because someone did not clean it before they returned it. I can still screw it on okay, so I'm gonna get away with shaking it up here and I'm gonna clean it up when I'm done with it. So take that lid off and I'm gonna pour a little of that color. Now this one, only need a smidge of, so I'm just gonna do a little bloop of that, wipe that off. You can see I'm using my hands. The glazes are perfectly safe to get your hands dirty with, but now I'm gonna clean all the way around on that jar. This actually not only makes it so that you can just get the cap on and not be at risk for spilling, but it also keeps our glazes in better shape because I will really get that lid on tight and then air won't get inside and I won't get dried out pasty glaze later on. Keeps it much nicer. Put that lid back on and then it goes away. So two bottles is a max at a time to have off the shelf for our classroom, but you can use as many colors as you like to get your piece going. All right, I'm gonna move my water bucket so I stop reaching across. Put that guy over here, that guy over there. Okay, so first thing that you do with your bisqueware before you start glazing it all is to clean it off, is to dust it off. Because there's dust in our classroom air, these get stored outside for a period of time, and there's just dust that sort of happens even inside the kiln. So you take your small sponge, wring it out with clean water, and then give your whole piece a wipe down. Now, I chose to make this piece as my demo piece because he has lots and lots of texture. He's got all of these little scales on him. And so there's no way I'm gonna get in between every little piece, but the dust is unlikely to get into all those little nooks and crannies too. It's mostly sitting on the surface. So if I'm careful, I'm just wiping everything down. So that is good enough. I do have horns at the top here further on the camera. Well, sort of. He's got little horns at the very top that are kind of thin. Here we go, so you can see. So again, super careful. I do not want to snap those guys off. So I'm going to be really gentle while I'm giving them a cleanup. Okay? And then putting glaze on your character or your piece or whatever it is. Could be a bowl or anything else as well. So I'm gonna go for these scales because I wanna show you that if you do have lots of texture, how to get the glaze kind of everywhere. 
you've got a variety of brushes to choose from. In our classroom, you've gotten two blue handled brush brushes with really nice soft bristles. There's this big guy and you guys have a smaller one that I don't have. You have a black bristled brush that's much stiffer. Um, so it's good for some things, not good for others. And then we have a whole assortment of like green handled brushes with all sizes that are up in our community tool zone where you can grab small brushes if you need to or medium sized brushes. So I know I'm trying to get the glaze in between and in all these grooves. So I'm gonna grab probably this guy. And when you use a brush, you don't wanna use a dry brush and go right into glaze. It will not pick up as much glaze as it should. So first rinse the brush with clean water and then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna load up my brush. So glaze, if you didn't already know, is very different than paint. It will look different when you get the color in the bottle like this. This is gonna become like a pump, pumpkin orange. Right now it's kind of a creamy, almost, almost peach kind of orange. So it's gonna change when it goes through the firing process and is taken to really high temperatures. So what I want on my dragon here is for him to have orange kind of under his scales with some yellowy highlights on them. So I'm just sort of jabbing that glaze without destroying my brush. I'm just getting underneath and you can see I'm using a lot of glaze on here. So when you're glazing, it's a bit different than painting in that I'm applying layers. So in this portion, I'm kind of getting the first layer so it's underneath and in between all of those scales. And when it goes on, it's kind of dark and shiny, but within seconds, minutes at the most, it's gonna get chalky and dry looking and the color is gonna subside, okay? So that's my first coat if I'm putting it on something that has lots of texture. Now on his belly here, it's more smooth. There's a little bit of texture, but he's more smooth. So if I'm applying glaze on a smooth surface and it's a big surface, I'm gonna probably go for a big brush because I'm gonna save some time. It's dry, so I gotta get it wet first, then wipe away the excess water and then I'm gonna go back in this yellow. I've got one coat on him right now, but I'm gonna put another coat. Again, load your brush up. Don't be skimpy with it, because you're putting on coats or layers. So I'm gonna go in one direction, meaning horizontal in this case. I'm gonna go back and forth horizontal, and I'm gonna cover that whole surface with a nice thick coating. Notice I'm not doing a lot of brushing just kind of layering on lots of material. And in this case, I've got to get kind of underneath his head, so I'm gonna push it up and under there where I can't really see, but my tool will still fit. And now that was one coat of glaze. So you can see smooth texture, pretty fast and easy. Rougher texture, I've got to sort of jab and push it up into those parts. But this is only one coat. When you're putting on low fire glaze, you wanna have three coats of glaze in order to get a really nice color and not show a bunch of brush marks and have thick and thin spots. So if I'm going back to doing my orange here, I gotta do my second coat. So my brush is already rinsed out and wet. So I'm gonna get back in that orange. And again, I'm gonna do that same thing and kind of push that glaze up and under any place that I want to get another coat on there. I am not doing this. I'm not brushing back and forth because really if I do that a bunch, I'm pulling off as much glaze as I'm putting on. So instead you want to just kind of push it up and under and it's getting on the surface too. If I didn't want this to have like two colors on it, then I would just do the same application both times and make sure that it's just, it's getting everywhere. Okay, so it's shiny and glossy again because it's wet. It's going to take it a little bit longer for the second coat to dry. In the meantime, I'm going to go back to this smooth part and show you what you want to do for that. 
So each time you apply a layer, you really want to go in different directions. On my texture side, I really can't do that very much. That's why I'm just kind of making sure I'm getting it all into all those nooks and crannies. But on a flat surface or a smoother surface, I can do that. And so this time I'm going to go vertical. So now that this coat, first coat of glaze has dried, I'm going to go back on and put on a nice thick coat going vertically, up and down. Okay, and then once that's on, I'm going to let that dry. It's going to take a few more minutes again. In my case, I'm kind of out of those two colors, so I would go refill if I had underestimated how much glaze I need. and then. I would put on my third coat going horizontal again on this smooth side. Now on the back side here, I want to show you a little trick as far as making your piece maybe a little more interesting. So I've got two coats of orange in this zone right here, but I want yellow to be like on the tips of all of his little scales. So I'm going to let that orange dry a little bit. I'm going to go grab my bottle of glaze because like I said, I'm really low on that color. So I'm going to grab that one back. I'm gonna check the lid again and screw it back on and shake it up again. Even though I was just in it a few minutes ago, I wanna make sure it's nice and mixed. Pour a little glaze back in that spot. There we go, clean off those threads. And put that cap back on. Okay, and now my little scales here on the back are pretty much dry and what I want like I said is just sort of the tips of his scales to be a different color I've got two coats of orange so now I'm gonna do my yellow I'm not gonna load my brush quite as much there's glaze on there but it's not super duper thick and I'm gonna drag my brush one direction and just kind of hit the tips of those scales in that zone that I've done. I would have done the whole piece, but time's sake, demo video, just doing that. So hopefully you can see that, that there's just a little bit of yellow on the ends of those scales. And that gives me a little variation in color. If I wanted it more dramatic, like I didn't want the orange to be on the scales before I added the yellow, I could take my small sponge and wipe off the glaze that's on the tips and then just apply the color there. But by layering the two, I'm gonna get something that's maybe a little bit more interesting in the end, okay? So those are the basics for applying glaze. Three coats, remember, if you want nice solid color and you don't wanna have a bunch of brush strokes show, um, use your brushes or come get some community brushes when you're done with your palette and your brushes for the day, rinse them in clean water, swishing your brushes around. Don't go stomping them out in the bottom of the bucket, but really swish them around. You can kind of press them against the side with the flat of the bristle, so I'm pushing this way on the inside there. And I just wanna make sure that all the water, if I squeeze my brush out, all the water looks clean and then I'm gonna store them upright in my cup. Don't put them in your cup down or they'll smash all those bristles and ruin your nice brushes. With the palette, if you still have glaze in it and it's the end of the period and you know you have more to do tomorrow, we have a drawer full of plastic wrap so you can wrap your palette up and put it in the locker and then use it again the next day. If you're done with it and you've used all your glaze up, take it to the sink and wash it and put it back in your locker. Or if you have a whole bunch of glaze in here and you know exactly what color that came out of and you just didn't use it all up, you can save us some money <laughs> and waste and pollution of just putting glaze down the drain and you could scoop it right back into that bucket or that cup, jar, whatever the heck these are called, a jar, and then put that back in the cabinet and go wash out your palette, okay? The last thing to be aware of for glazing is that your piece must be, must have what we call a dry foot, which means no glaze on the bottom of your piece. So you might've seen as I'm glazing, I'm getting glaze on the table. I load my brush up really heavily, so I'm gonna have some sloppy stuff that kind of gets underneath my piece. 
But in the end, when I'm totally done with my glazing job, I'm gonna squeeze out my big sponge. This is my, the best way to clean the dry foot in my experience, which is to have that big sponge clean, fresh water, not full of clay or glaze, and then you've got your piece. I've got a really big kind of awkward piece, but he needs to have no glaze on the bottom. So I've got the choice of either turning it upside down or sideways and wiping the sponge across the bottom, including in this case, his little feet. So this isn't the only part that touches the shelf, but even his little feet and the bottoms of his wings set on the tabletop. So I've got to make sure that no glaze is on any of those surfaces. Because remember, glaze is a material that's gonna melt and become basically liquid glass when it's at the high heat in the kiln. And so if there's any glaze on the bottom and I put it on the shelf in the kiln and it fires up, that glass is gonna seal my piece to the shelf. It's gonna glue it right on there. And then the only way to get it off is to break it off, which doesn't do your piece any good and it doesn't do the shelf any good. So you must have what we call a dry foot, which doesn't actually mean dry. It means no glaze on the underside of your piece. So that's the very last step that you do before you turn it in on the cart with a little glaze ticket. Thank you guys for paying attention.